Palesa. At the end of the First World War commemora Commemoration Peace Forum, more than 50 countries and more than 100 companies have agreed to work together to fight cybercrime. This will include inter in interference in the elections and hate speech. But the three Security Council permanent members with veto powers, the United States, uh, Russia and China, did not sign the pledge. South African Minister of Defence, Senosivio Mapisa Ngakula, re represented the country at the Peace Forum. Mapisa Ngakula has uh, called for respect for multilateralism. Our correspondent, uh, Elina Kassa, spoke to the South African Defence Minister. If you visit the site, I'm sure you must have visited Aklepata and Delelewood. In the first instance, the one thing which strikes you is a human being, is the fact that so divided, so separated along racial lines were our people, that even in death, they are separated from the people who had brought them to Europe to be part of that war you find that black people from South Africa are buried in a separate cemetery, separate village, away from where their counterparts, who actually are the ones who had brought them to Europe to be part of a war they had not designed. And therefore, I think the one lesson which people should learn is that as a country, as a nation, but also as the world, we need towards, to, to work towards breaking of racial barriers. We need to, very, to work very hard towards reconciliation in nation building. We need to work hard to see people as human beings who have the same blood and not black blood or white blood. It's a normal thing, it's in the genes, it's something we have no control over, which is God cre uh, created. But I actually think that the one thing we need to learn amongst others, at least as South Africans, is the fact that we were so divided that even when we went to war, our people were relegated to carrying a luggage belonging to the soldiers, to cleaning blood, they could not, for instance, even at a time when they were surrounded, they could not be given weapons so that they could fight and defend themselves. That, to me, is, was the worst form of racism. And unfortunately, it was perpetuated right up to their death. To date, they are buried in two separate cemeteries. And I think for me, you don't want to reverse history. You don't want to correct the wrongs which were corrected then by exhuming maybe the bodies of uh, our people and take them back to South Africa. But if anything, I would imagine that as a country at some point we will have a pilgrimage to both Aklapata and Delvelwood to allow for South Africans to see what racism can do, that you can be divided even in your death. Are you worried that the world's moving in the wrong direction? I am, of course. I'm also a global citizen and part of this global village. And uh, I think that leaders find it very easy to declare a war. Of course, because they are never part of the fighting forces. They don't wear boots, they are not there on the ground, they don't carry guns, they don't kill. By simply sitting there and do an analysis and come, come out with wrong conclusions and, and way forward, you can actually take disastrous decisions. And I think that uh, that's unfortunate at times what leaders do, that you sit, you do your analysis, and you come out with decisions which are disastrous to human beings, and you ask people to go to war because you will not be part of that war anyway as a person who's designed it by virtue of having taken a decision. So I, I, I just think that it's not, uh, it's not good if we're going to have leadership that's going to be warmongerous. That's one. Two, this uh, world came out from a, 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 a Cold War period. And we all thought the Cold War period is over. And therefore, it is it is incumbent upon all of us, all states, to work towards a 
socio-economic growth, prosperity and development of all nations. But of course some people are talking about this and that and uh, I uh, read with interest and listened with interest to what President Macron has said, which is that uh, Europe needs to prepare itself, tighten its military, uh, so that I guess it can defend or protect itself. Perhaps yes, very important. My understanding is that the challenge now has nothing to do with you being in Europe, in Africa, or even anywhere in the, in the world. The threat to humanity is terrorism. If anything, what we should all be talking about is how do we neutralize the forces which seek to take the path of instilling terror amongst our nations. That's what we should be talking about. I don't think we should be talking about strengthening uh, the military of one continent as against other continents. We should all be talking about how do we defend, how do we protect our people, how do we thrive to prosper as nations of the world, how do we develop, how do we lift those who have been downtrodden for, 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 for centuries rather than talk about spending a lot of money on military hardware because we are seeking to defend ourselves. We should be talking about engagement. We should be talking about dialogue. We should be talking about engaging those countries where we believe terrorists um, or so-called terrorists come from. That's, that's, what we, that's what we should all be preoccupied with rather than be talking war, 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 war all the time.